In my last video, I left off on a cliffhanger, so I'm just gonna get right back into it. If it's true that the Long Night actually happened during the Andal invasion, why would George want to hide this from us initially? Well, it could be that the Andals were the reason for the Long Night, that they were the reason the others came down from the north. The others may have been unleashed in response to the Andals. Remember, the first men killed half of the children with bronze, and the Andals finished the job with iron. The Andals succeeded in doing what the first men could not, eradicating the children. However, to be more precise, the Andals could have broken the pact. The pact between humans and children. The pact that prohibited men from cutting down weirwoods, which is exactly what the Andals did, and very effectively. In fact, the books outright tell us that the Andals broke the pact. The pact endured until the Andals came, because the Andals drove the children out of all the deep woods the pact had once given them, but they also burned the werewoods and cut down the faces. This is what could have triggered the Others and the Long Night. This is also why the Others could have hated iron and fire, because the iron of the Andals cut down the faces, and their fire burned the Weirwood Groves. The men with iron and fire broke the pact. Thus, the others hated iron and fire. Now, if I'm wrong about the Long Night, and it happened when everyone thinks it happened, why would the others be unleashed upon the first men who never broke the pact? Because the books very much imply that the first men never did, especially this passage, which says the pact endured all throughout the years up until the Andals came. Wouldn't it make sense, instead, that the breaking of the pact by the Andals triggered the Others and the Long Night? After all, they cut down the sacred werewoods and drove the children out of the deep woods the pact had once given them. The pact was obviously created for a reason. It had to have had consequences if broken, and we know the first men never broke it. So it makes sense that the Long Night happened during the Andal invasion. The Long Night and the others were that consequence. Now, have a look at this passage here from Bran 7 in A Game of Thrones. It's Maester Lewin giving a history lesson on the Andal invasion. I showed it to you in the beginning of this video. However, I left out one part of this passage. After the Andals decimated the children and presumably broke the pact, the children then fled north. And then what? The funny thing about this sentence is that Maester Lewin was interrupted. Well, I think the children fled north and activated their secret weapon, the Others. Because, as we know, the Others came from the north, the lands of always winter. And, as we know, the Andals slaughtered the children, which is what prompted them to flee north. But Maester Lewin probably wasn't going to say that especially since he himself believes the Andals arrived long after the Long Night. This, this man is not even a master. Thought he'd never shut up. 
Now, even though I believe the Long Night actually happened during the Andal invasion, I don't believe that is the true origin of the White Walkers. Here's why. The Game of Thrones history and lore videos already told us that the children first unleashed the White Walkers during their wars with the First Men, before the Pact, and way before the Long Night. Fearing extinction, the children combined their powers for one last spell. By themselves, the children were too few to resist the onslaught. But if they could turn men's numbers against them, after hundreds of years and untold death and destruction, the wisest heads of the children and the first men finally prevailed. Heroes and rulers on both sides met upon an isle in the god's eye to form the pact. Thus ended the Dawn Age and began the Age of Heroes. Yet after the dawn must come the night. The great evil that the children unleashed in the war returned centuries later. The White Walkers were first created against the First Men before the Andals even invaded. And this actually makes perfect sense, even for the books. Because how else could the children have fought the First Men to a stalemate and agreed on the pact? The breaking of the Arm of Dorne failed. And that was their greatest display of power, their ultimate weapon. Furthermore, it is even said that the children were losing the war. More of them were dying than the first men, even though the children were already outnumbered. So, the children were losing the war against the first men. But somehow, they were able to fight the first men to a draw and make them agree to a pact. The only way this would have been possible is if the White Walkers were first unleashed in that war between the children and the first men. This is why I am applying the same logic to the books that the show has offered us. However, if the show already told us that the White Walkers were created by the children, and they also told us they were first used against the first men, what do they mean when they say the prequel is going to show us the true origin of the White Walkers? Well, I could only think of one possibility. What the true origin of the White Walkers could be referring to is what they were before the children lost control of them. Let me explain. Since the children first used the others in their wars against the First Men up until the Pact, then that means the others were still in their control. Because the Pact stopped the fighting and started peace, between the first men and the children. That peace could only have been possible if the White Walkers were still under their control and not going around killing all of the first men. With this in mind, when HBO said the prequel is going to show us the true origin of the White Walkers, I think this could mean we're going to learn why the White Walkers turned against the children or how they broke free from their control. We could witness their transformation, so to speak, from being cold servants of the children to white walkers, icy beings who hate all of creation. Basically, we could learn what their true motive is, because I doubt the main TV show is going to tell us. I just don't see the Night King having a nice chat with John or Danny explaining why he wants all of Westeros dead. In the prequel, we could have some scenes where the White Walkers are interacting with the children and working together up until the Long Night, where we know they became enemies since the children helped defeat them. And this ties in with the whole theory of the Long Night happening during the Andal invasion. Here's why. 
since the pact endured up until the Andals came, and the others hated the Andals for destroying the Werewoods with iron and fire, then that means the others were only doing what the children wanted them to do. They only started killing men because they destroyed the sacred werewood trees and broke the pact. They were reacting appropriately and justifiably after it was broken. However, since we know the children helped stop them, that means something happened. Either the children lost control of the White Walkers, or the others simply went too far and went their own way. One distinct possibility is that the children only wanted the others to kill the Andals and not the First Men, but the others saw no difference or simply didn't care, and so they started killing every man, whether or not that man wielded bronze or iron. This would actually make perfect sense, because all throughout the history of the Andal invasion, the first men and the children fought together side by side to defend the Werewoods from the Andal invaders. But whatever happened between the children and the others that caused their rift, it could only have happened after the pact was broken and sometime into the long night, because as I have tried to convey, the others weren't going around killing men when the pact was still intact. Otherwise, there would be no peace between the children and men. And the books have told us that only the Andals broke the pact. But this is just one possibility as to what the true origins of the White Walkers may mean. So, the reason George could have hidden the truth from us about when the Long Night really happened is that the Andals caused it, because they broke the pact. However, I think there is a bigger implication if the Long Night really did happen during the Andal invasion. The big implication would be that the Valyrians existed during the Long Night. Remember, the Valyrians caused the Andal invasion in the first place. This would be huge because this would mean that the two greatest opposing forces on Earth existed simultaneously. The Valyrians and their dragons from the land of always summer, and the others and their undead armies from the land of always winter. The Valyrians could have been crucial in helping end the Long Night. It only makes sense, especially since the last hero is said to have slain the others with a blade that both John and Sam believe was Valyrian steel. So this is another reason George could have hidden the truth about when the Long Night really happened. Think about it from his perspective a storytelling perspective. If this story started off with the common knowledge that the greatest forces of fire existed alongside the greatest forces of ice, it would be terribly obvious that those who best represent fire had something to do in the defeat of those who best represent ice. Everyone reading would immediately guess correctly that the Valyrians had something to do with defeating the others, which is sort of implied by the last hero slaying the others with Valyrian steel. So, this is why I think George could have hidden the truth about when the Long Night really happened. However, there's one more thing I want to say before I end this video. If the Long Night really happened during the Andal invasion, I believe this could explain two mysteries in A Song of Ice and Fire. 1. Why did some men choose to live north of the wall where the others went when it was built? 2. How and why did one of these men, who would later become wildlings, 
come into the possession of a horn that could bring down the wall. Stay tuned for future videos.